now let's understand the difference between identity and resource based policy i know you have been waiting for this so the subjective definition tells us that identity based policies are attached to an im user group or role which are indirectly we also call them as identities isn't it and these policies let you specify what the identity can do that is its permission and on the other hand the resource based policies are attached to the resource so identity based policies are attached to identity resource based policies attached to resource simple for example you can attach resource based policies to amazon s3 buckets amazon sqs queues vpc endpoints and aws key management service encryption keys the most important thing you need to understand here is that even though the user doesn't have a identity based policy to perform operation on a s3 bucket if there is a resource based policy that allows full access to the principal then that user the user group will be able to operate on that bucket i hope you got the point here even though the user doesn't have a identity based policy to perform operations on a s3 bucket if there is a resource based policy that allows full access to that principal that user or that user group will still be able to operate on that bucket now let's see this example here first we have the identity based policy so here we have user a who can perform list read operations on resource a we have user b which can perform list operation read operation on resource b and c user c which can actually list read write on resource a b and c all three of them all three a b and c user d has no policy attached so it does not have a identity based policy attached to it next we have resource based policies and the first resource based policy is for resource a in which we are allowing user a to perform list and read operations and we are also allowing user c to perform list and read operation now we have resource b resource based policy for resource b where we have user b and uh, for user b we are allowing it to perform list operation and write operation similarly we have a user d which can actually perform list operation and read operation the last one that we have is for the resource c where user b is denied access to resource c so there is a deny access in the resource based policy for the resource c and user d has allowed full access so user d has full access to resource c and this is a total policy implementation of the aws account now let's see how it actually affects so if we see this chart here we have four users a b and c and d and these are list of operations list read write denied access and full access and if we take into consideration the identity based policies and the resource based policy for user a it can actually list on resource a if you see we have a resource a user a can list and read here also user a can list and read so list and read operations are allowed for on resource a and the write operation we don't see any write operation on any of other resources so write denied full access or full access is not applicable here because we are not denying full access for anything now let's come back to user b it can list and read on resource b and c but when we go to resource c it has denied access so now user b can perform list and read on b as the resource b policy also said that it can list and write on resource b so now it has three operation list read and write but on resource c b does not have any access so now it can perform list operation on resource b it can perform read operation on resource b and write operation on resource b but it has denied full access on resource c so user b cannot perform any operations on resource c and resource a as well because it has no access so it is a implicit deny now let's see for the user c it can perform list read write on resource a b and c so resource a b and c it can list read write and here if you see we have a mapping argument on the resource a where resource c can list and read and there is no other policy for this uh, user c here in resource b and resource c so all that matters for now is the identity based policy as this is allowing user c to perform operations on resource a b and c those operations are list read and write so it has access for list read write 
on all the resources that we have a b and c now let's come back to user d if we see user d let's see what yeah so here we have resource b it can list and read so now we have written list and read for resource b and now on resource c it has full access so full access is given to resource c and other than that as it doesn't have any identity based policy and we don't have user d on the resource a part so whatever applies will be applied on resource b and resource c and that is why user d is able to perform operations on resource b that are list and read and thus it does not have any write permissions or it does not have a permission that actually tells it is totally denied access but it still can perform operations on resource c because it has allowed full access so now that you have to understand is even though the user doesn't have a identity based policy attached to it if there is a resource based policy that allows full access then that user will be able to perform the operation on that particular resource now let's see this once again for identity based policies with boundaries the effective permission is the intersection of permission boundary and identity based policy so this is its effective permission and this is identity based policies with boundaries next one is the effective permission of resource based policies that lies between the union of identity based policy and resource based policy and the permission boundary but there is one difference here and the difference is that the resource based policy is not dependent on the implicit deny as i already told you it is not dependent on the implicit deny implicit deny is like you haven't written anywhere in any policy that the effect is deny and also if there is no policy there then it means implicit deny that is why if you see even though a policy doesn't exist in the identity this policy does not exist in the identity but still if it is present in the resource based policy and the effect is allow the permission will be granted because this is a resource based policy and it does not depend on the implicit deny that is why this is its effective permission the last one is session based policy and the effective permission for this set of policy types are the intersection between three policies the three policies are session policy permission boundary and identity based policy and the intersection defines the effective permission for the session policy and an explicit deny and i am telling you this once again and an explicit deny in any of these policies overrides the allow so i hope you got the point between the differences between the effective permissions of all three use cases so let's move on